too many people that are still doing the same thing that we used to do. And I'm just grateful to be here to make a difference. Now, Bishop Campbell, we have a minute for you to uh, sort of make some statements and then we'll come back to you during the uh, second segment and start with you. But say who you are over the last uh, minute that we have here, uh, uh, yes. uh, <clears throat> Bishop Campbell, and then we'll come back to you. I also want to thank you, Dr. Haney, for allowing me to be here. Uh, my name is Bishop Marcus Campbell. I'm the pastor of the Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church located at 1032. Monroe Street and founder and CEO of the Gentleman and Not Gangster Juvenile Mentoring Program that we have here in Nashville, Tennessee. And, and, and so quite a bit has been done in reference to that particular program and I think that the three of you bring some excellent information in reference to how we might be able to deal with some of the challenges that are facing our young people today. And so we're going to take our first commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. information for the next four minutes, three or four minutes, you know, just lay down some information dealing with this particular issue. Then it, you follow him and take about two or three minutes uh, of that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll let you sort of wrap this mm -hmm. second segment out uh, for today. And then we'll come back and we'll go back down and we'll have 10 minutes all to right. sort of bring all of this information together. But the information I think that we're getting today is very, very important oh, information yeah. because I think this, and that's why we like to do this background information, oh, yeah. just, yeah. just to indicate <laughs> No matter what a man's situation might be today, mm -hmm. yeah. that it was not always right. like that, yeah, you see. Right. And I think that's yeah. an encouragement. Yeah. And, and you ought to hear my story. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, that's you, Listen, that's you. Listen, you ought to hear my story. I was yeah. a military uh, brat in yeah. a real sense with my father overseas. And mm. uh, he was... Uh, Oh, he was an Air Force person uh -huh. and whatever. And my family, my mother and everybody was there. And I was 18 years old in Paris, France. <laughs> Young running man. Nah, Young running man. wild. Young man. Young man. <laughs> running wild. Yes, sir. And so in God Paris. saved me, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 we've all got those stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that the, when right. we own up to them, yes. then we can move forward. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Right. Move That's so forward. true. Right. And so when we come back, uh, Bishop, we'll start with you and then uh, yes, Walla. Okay. And then on down, and this is this, this will be our eight-minute uh, segment. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is this the eight-minute segment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this yeah, is eight-minute segment. Yeah. Mm, that's all right. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. Uh, the topic is the dilemma of the African-American male, and we're fortunate to have with us Pastor Kay Walker, uh, Reverend Waller, and uh, Bishop Campbell. And, of course, Bishop Campbell, I think the uh, end of the first segment, we got a little information from you, but what I'd like for you to do uh, during the second segment is to take some time to talk about some of the challenges that you think that our young people are facing and how you would like to uh, see some of these, these things resolved and then uh, Reverend Waller will have an opportunity and then uh, Pastor Walker and we'll be able to sort of cover the eight minutes of this particular segment. Uh, yes, sir. Dr. Haney, uh, dealing with the organization that we have, Gentlemen and Not Gangsters, dealing with the juveniles that uh, do come through the program, uh, one thing that we do notice is uh, that we have an economic dilemma. Uh, not only that, we have an educational dilemma and we have a personal dilemma. The economic dile dilemma is that uh, mom and daddy uh, might be incarcerated uh, or have been incarcerated. It's hard for them to uh, get a job and provide for their family um, uh, with those felonies on, on their background, uh, juveniles are not able to have any employment because of their age or they're just not jobs that's willing to give them a chance or to try them out. 
uh, when we look at the economics, most uh, in the black community, not many of them is making more than minimum wage uh, because of the educational background of where they don't have a great education. When we look at a lot of schools in our black community, especially here in Nashville, their, their test scores are so much lower than schools that are outside of the demographic of where we live at in the uh, poverty uh, places in Nashville that we are. And the personal issue that I see is that because of the parents and what they are accustomed to, what they have been taught, what, what they have gone through in their lives, they're teaching their kids the same thing. So uh, they, they're just prone to what they've been taught, what they mm -hmm. see, uh, their environment, and uh, is calling, causing a dilemma with our black males because they're becoming what their environment is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just believe if, if we had a better economical system for our black community with, with great educational uh, background there to support uh, them to be able to get their economical ways together, I think the, p the personal problem with the parenting and the child would be totally different. But that's what we deal with a lot of times. Mm -hmm. We find that the parents are not uh, as involved and engaged in their life as they should be. We care more for the kids than they do. They drop them off at the front door, mm -hmm. they leave them. They don't come inside to see what the program is about. Uh, a lot of times they might not even drop them off. They give them a bu little bit of bus fare mm -hmm. and tell them to get there the best way they can. So uh, I, I think that there's a big overall picture that we can't just uh, uh, key in on one point uh, dealing with the uh, dilemma with our young black males in America. You know, uh, Bishop Campbell, uh, what I'd like to understand, and perhaps you might be able to give us some information in reference to this. Do you think it would be cost effective for uh, our governmental officials to provide our young men and women with some kind of employment instead of simply refusing to do anything in that d direction? Do you think that that would help us out? It would help us greatly. You know, uh, being in the faith-based community, we have a saying of, of uh, what we say is the idle mind is the devil's workshop. And I believe that these young uh, uh, teenagers, our juveniles, had an opportunity of employment, that it would teach them leadership, teach them responsibility, uh, uh, give them a great reference, a great start in their life to show them that you have to work for what you want and uh, not go out and take it from somebody else or, or, or selling to destroy somebody else's life to be able to benefit your own pocket. What about you, uh, Brother Waller? Dr. Haney, what I know about the, uh, the youth and people as a whole in our community, just a trap. And what happens when a trap is set for you, you don't see the trap. Mm -hmm. And once you're captured into the trap, such as I was, mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was in a trap mm -hmm. because the things that I was trapped in was attractive. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful of what we do in front of others. Mm -hmm. People were doing things that had my attention mm -hmm. and it caused me to desire to be into what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And after doing so, and then got captured, it was like, this is a wonderful thing. I'm getting high, I'm getting money. I understand the language, but it's one thing that I didn't know. And that is that the trap was so powerful that once you get in it, there's an enemy and you have to do his will. And I was that person that came to my senses as the word of God says, after you had come to your senses and escaped the snare, the trap of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So once a person is trapped, they're going to do his will. Mm -hmm. Now what we have to do is bring forth great information that's so powerful that they would miss the trap. Mm -hmm. Now after I was released from the bondage that I was in, I was told mm -hmm. to go back to my community in which I had made so effective mm -hmm. in the unrighteous path that people followed me, admired what I was doing, but I was in a trap. Mm -hmm. So I called so many people to be in a trap with me and he's sending me right back out there mm -hmm. to get the people that's still out there out of the trap. Sure. And that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I've wrote, written a book that's entitled Steal High, mm -hmm. one of the greatest books that I think that can help our communities mm -hmm. and get people back into the swing of mm -hmm. what we really need. And that's my desire. And that's why I'm out in the streets. Uh, mm -hmm. New Way Outreach Ministry is a ministry that reaches out. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be inside of the building. I'm outside where the people are that's hurting, that's crying for help. And my encouragement to the people that's in the church, come out of the building. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You never know. The and and so the idea of the book Still High yeah. is to indicate that you are still high, but yeah. you're high on something mm -hmm. outside yeah. of what uh, yeah. you were generally high on. Yeah. And the experience is greater, much greater. with being still high yeah. than it was during the er earlier parts of your situation. Is that what you're saying? In That's what I'm that? saying. And it don't cost you a dime mm -hmm. to keep this high once you learn about it. And it has so much information that the same enemy that captured me don't want nobody to get this book. Mm -hmm. This book been out since 2013, and I believe Nashville should be flooded with the book. Mm -hmm. If you want to see a difference, you never know until you try it. And, and, and I think some of the problems that we're talking about here are not problems that are limited <clears throat> in terms of the African-American experience and the African-American male, mm -hmm. because uh, in a real sense, getting high in the other sense is a national problem now, which yes, is to yes. say that more people are dying of oh, yeah. cocaine and et cetera than oh, yeah. in automobile accidents and et cetera. And so I think what uh -huh. you have there as a book mm -hmm. uh, is something that is very, very valuable and needed yes. in terms of the kind of situations that we find. Not African-American males, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but African-Americans, yeah. other groups and all of them Correct. find the same problems, the same challenges, mm -hmm. and et cetera. Yeah. And so what we're going to do, uh, Reverend Walker, we're going to take this uh, second commercial break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start with you doing this last 10-minute segment and then go down. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. If yeah. they see things, they need a job, they, mm -hmm. need, they need to have some money. Yeah. And if you had yeah. some way of knowing on Saturday you're going to get 55 or $60 or yeah. whatever, you could yeah. do something with that. Right, right. That's true. That's but true. Not, it's it's hard right. telling the teenagers, drop your gang flag, mm -hmm. put the dope down. If you can't give them means to be able to provide, yeah, you that's know, right, right, uh, right, right. It, it's hard to and do. And that's it. hard for me to understand yeah. that our leaders and yeah. state legislature folks can't seem to understand that that right. it's much more cost effective to do it that way. Yes. Right. Then, but they, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how they go. Um, well, anyway, Rob, we're gonna start with you. Okay. When we come back uh, during this uh, second segment. We'll have ten minutes, and then you, you take about three minutes of it, and you take about three minutes of it, and then. We'll be the last couple of minutes and then All right. I'll end it out for the day. But this mm -hmm. is exactly, I think that this is this, this kind of information is people need to know this. Yeah. I think people know it, but yeah, it but needs somebody true. to come to pull it all together sure, and make, sure. it, make them about. understand I mean, that. That's, that's, that's what it's about. It just many, so many lives are simply being disrupted Man, and it, destroyed it in terms of what it we're is. doing here. It really is. That's it. It and so, Pastor, we'll start with you. All so right. You know, yeah. know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just pick it up and deal with what we're doing. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's take about three or four minutes. So, yeah. Wallace. Yes. And then it's going to be. Let the uh, bishop close us out. All right. <coughs> that what we put together. Okay. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah I like this show. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker, uh, Reverend Waller, and uh, Bishop uh, Campbell. Campbell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Campbell. Yeah, that's all right. Hey, I, I, I'm a pastor here, yeah. I'm a reverend that's there, right. Right. and I'm a bishop yeah. down yeah. there. Yeah. By the time I get to yeah. the bishop, yeah. I forget who the yeah. bishop yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. All that. <laughs> Next time, bishop, I'll start with you. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, right. but let us start off, uh, uh, Pastor Walker, really by... Uh, making some comments in reference to the topic that we're trying to deal with today. And I think all of us understand the tenor mm -hmm. and the uh, purpose of what we're trying to do here. And let's speak sure. from, it, from that perspective. Okay. You know, uh, Dr. Haney, one, one of the things that uh, Bishop Campbell touched on mm -hmm. and that you also offer some feedback into, we talked about the economics of it all. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about uh, one of the common denominators where people are, are people are that, that deals with the violence and the gang involvement, the the drug selling, the, the robbing, it, it's all about economics, it's all about money. We live in America, uh, the land of opportunity, a capitalistic society, uh, where money, money is the, the voice, money speaks, money gets things done. You know, money is right up there with oxygen, you can't, you got to have it to, to, to survive and live. 
And, and I think what's happening is, is that we know money is needed. Uh, we said we go to our youth or, or young men and, and, you know, we want to talk to them about, you know, getting a job. And at the same time, what we're doing, we're asked because you said something about the government, you know, uh, doing something. Well, the government has done what the government is going to do. And that is they took away the stuff. You know, they, they began to take away those things that that worked. You know, the government took away the uh, the ability for a young black man to go into the military without having a, a, a high school diploma mm -hmm. or, or graduating high school. That was a safety net that kept us out of the school to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, we had an option right there to go into the military. You could drop out of school. And a lot of us grew up with the idea and thought in our head, we drop out of school and go to the military. But now you, you can't do that either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then, you know, you got the summer program that they took away, the community centers that they mm -hmm. took away. And, you know, and we look at all this stuff, the feeding, you know, youth in the park, all that kind of stuff that the government provided and, and began to take away. And then Bush with this faith-based initiative stuff, which is just another mechanism to control folks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is this, I don't think it's logical for anybody that's really out here trying to help uh, the youth try to build our community or help restructure some things, I don't think it's logical to, to believe that the government's gonna give us something that they're taking away. You know, why would we think that the government, you know, is gonna give us some money to help us when the government is the one taking the money away from us that was just that was helping us. So what we have to do, we have to we're gonna have to create our own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, if we want to provide a job, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to create the monies ourselves mm -hmm. and provide the jobs ourselves. Otherwise, mm -hmm. won't no jobs be provided. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll still be trying to get a 501c3, mm -hmm. still begging the government for this, still begging this private foundation for that. Mm -hmm. And then if they give you the money, then, if, and then you're starting to make a difference. They start seeing lives change. They start seeing growth and stuff and development and stuff like that. Then they're going to, the next time you apply, re, uh, submit for that grant, they're not going to give you the money mm -hmm. because not, they don't want to see you succeed but now if you're not if, if if you're not doing anything you're not producing no results but you're just looking good on paper oh they'll keep on giving you money you know what i'm saying but if you if you saw some positive results and you really impacting the lives of these people they're going to pull that money back because they don't want it to happen you got the privatization of the prison system here going on and you got they asking the states to guarantee me 90 percent occupancy and you and you think the state going to give you some money to mess up that 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 a uh, contract they got no they're not gonna do that so we if we're gonna do something then we got to create our own monies and we got to come together you know if you want to change the community you got to buy it you just mm -hmm. you, you got to go in and buy it. You, you see it happening all over town mm -hmm. 12 south used to be 12th avenue so when when folks went in there and bought it they turned it into 12th south mm -hmm. i mean we could do the same thing mm -hmm. if enough people would just come together and pool resources you mm -hmm. know there's industries out here if if i stand into a, in a in a room full of young black males that's selling dope I'm not, I shouldn't go, I'm not going to go in there talking to them about go get you a job because mm -hmm. these are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I, I need to talk that to them about That is their job. How, yeah. That's the only job Absolutely. that they find right. available that's and right. that's see, the job that they work. And that's yeah. it. They're entrepreneurs at heart. So you got to talk to them about entrepreneurship. You got to show them, show me a way, show me a way I can make some money. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Some real money out here. Show me how I can own my own business mm -hmm. and how I can employ some people myself. That's what we have to do mm -hmm. and stop begging the government for stuff that that government ain't trying to give us. Mm -hmm. so Brother Waller. Dr. Haney, what I like about an opportunity to reach out is that the gift that we have, a lot of us have gifts and don't really know how to exercise it. And when we do and get captured, we can no longer pursue it. That happened to me. So I have a chapter in my book called Forsaken Talent. And then after that, the chapter next to it is called Out of Control. And if you don't mind, I'll give you a little reading of it, just a little mm -hmm. dab. Uh, of out of control. This is what used to happen to me years ago before I ever thought about any book writing. Mm -hmm. I can remember people asking me, Ricky, what college are you going to? Or who is recruiting you? My answer was always the same. College. Mm -hmm. Why would I go to someone's college and take a chance on breaking my ankle? Mm -hmm. I am making more money now than I would going to somebody's college. Mm -hmm. That's how I used to talk back then. And I said, how